G'day. Today is an absolutely lovely day. Perfect for flying. So I'm gonna go do a couple of circuits and a bit of a lap around in the new plane, ICP Ventura 4. She's the four seater plane that we've just gotten. She's powered by the 915S, which is a turbocharged Rotax engine. And I've got my jacket on because it can get a little bit cool in there, but I might take that off later. Now, those of you that are familiar with aircraft regulations would know that as it's a GA registered, so general aviation registered aircraft, so if we were to put any camera mounts on it, that'd have to be approved. So the filming is only gonna be able to be from inside the cab. So I'm going to see what I can do there, but I've got a mount so we can see over the shoulder and you can see some of our pre-flight. All right, let's have a look at her. So she's very similar as the Savannah. They're actually both from ICP, which is an Italian brand. But some of the major differences I've got are the, the height of it, the wing's length itself. But we're gonna do a full comparison video later on between the two. Today, I'm just gonna be getting some more air time up with her because next week I've got to fly over to Waluna and it's good to keep your skills up. Let's have a look at where we're gonna stick this camera before I do my pre-flight check. We have been noticing that the roof here gets a fair bit of vibration, but near my EPIRB, we got a nice flat spot. So let's have a look at that camera angle. Well, from up there, you can see the glass, which is a Garmin G3X touch. You can see a bit out of the cab, and you can see my feet. If we tilt the camera up a little bit more, yeah, we can still see everything there. So I might be a little bit offset, which means when I've got a passenger, we won't be seeing that part, but we are mainly looking at what we've got going on here. Check my engine over and then push her out. Now it's gonna be a little bit awkward to see what I'm doing here, but I will, but I'll try and get the camera around so you can see what I'm looking at and I'll explain it the best I can. Nice auto door. All right, so I'm just popping open the cowling here and having a look in at my engine. Look for any major changes, anything that doesn't look right. Check that my coolant reservoir is still got liquid. And then finally, get down to my engine oil. Now it just needs to be on the bottom of the stick to be okay. And this is where burping an engine comes in, that I can just turn it over a couple of times and we'll have it pop the level back up. So I'm just gonna turn that over a couple of times. Now it's gonna take quite a few turns to get it to burp. And this one doesn't quite have the same risk of starting by manually turning it over because she is a electric fuel injected engine, which is why she's an experimental, which I have to say, I'm a big fan of the AFI. You know, we have motorbikes that are AFI and they've been pretty reliable. Just because aviation is such a small industry really, in terms of experimental and trying things out because it costs a lot to prove and test something out. So, you know, magnetos work. Close up, there we go. Now I'll check that oil level again. And there we are, halfway up the stick, which is perfect. All right, time to whack these back in. And they're a push type of screw, so I'll see if I can't show you that like push and twist and lock so they're on a spring and they've got a bar across the back of them which I should have shown you but they've got a position in there that they lock into and then you twist as they pop out done so the next thing, and being a new aircraft, 
uh, is you do a fuel dump and that's what this special screwdriver I've got here is for. So this screwdriver is clear. So you can push up onto the fuel and you will be able to check for particulates and any impurities. Right, so the, the little ballast tank is opposite the pilot. And we are fairly clear. Okay. Then we're pretty much on to doing the airframe check on a carriage. Make sure that it's gonna to stay together as I take off and land. I'll point out something on the back of this plane, which we noticed was an issue with the other model and we had to fix up. So that's one of the things that we're, we're sort of doing. We're, we're testing this aircraft to make sure that it is really good and any differences and changes that uh, we notice, we will be letting the guys that manufacture them know about it, which is kind of what's good about this YouTube channel is that it's actually gonna be a valuable resource for them as well, you know. This is the, well, there's two of them in, in Australia now and we've got both of them. So we're gonna be kind of the ones checking for Australian conditions. On the other plane, up here on our rudder, we had some wear indicating there. So we are gonna be keeping a good eye on that, on this plane. All right, so that looks like a pretty good view. Now, I hooked up my intercom, but you won't be able to hear all of the pre-start before I've uh, turned the comms on, my well, avionics masters on. So I'll see how I go about doing a bit of the pre-start and then I'll do a cut and then over to that final stage. Looks like I've got to give my windscreen a quick clean. Now I don't want to rub the dust that I've just taken off on the glass, on the perspex, because I don't want to scratch it. So I'm just going to duck off and rinse this and I'll be back. Now I've got a few streaks that are gonna, you know, annoy me. And so I'm just going to go and get my uh, spray and a dry cloth. I'm a big fan of this Viewplex stuff. You know, plastic cleaner and anti-static polish. So I use it on the plane after I've done a wet wash and then I give this a dry wash with a microfiber cloth that you, know, you pick up at a hardware store for a couple of bucks. So those of you other aviators out there, what do you use for keeping your perspex clean and clear? Let us know in the comments below. Now, one of the big things that we do in this aircraft, interesting. I've got water dripping through from where I poured it on the dash. That's, that'd be great for the passenger. All right, you can stop now. Thank you. All right, back onto it. Uh, one of the things we do when getting in and out of this plane, make sure that we don't put our headset on until we're in it because the audio ports are down here and it just makes it a little bit, you know, easier to get in and out if you don't have your headset on and then you plug it in. The dripping will stop after a little while anyway. 
All right. Nothing's gonna flap around. We're good. My passenger's a couple of water bottles. I've got my sat phone in the back. She's charged up. I've got my EPIRB and I've got a handheld radio in case I need to land somewhere else and call Jasmine up. Time to get in. In this plane at the moment, I currently wear my sneakers. I'm not wearing my work boots in here yet. Just because they give me that little bit extra grip on this heavy rudder. Now, it's toe brakes, so uh, the, it means that you've got your rudder pedals and then you've got above it a socket where you've got brakes which are connected in. It's the same as the other plane, which is good, you know, like for like. Uh, I'm in a clear airfield. I'm gonna be operating off our home strip. Time to whack my belt on. It's a little bit loose because last time I was at altitude, so I uh, was getting a bit cool. So I'm not gonna hit anything on the dash if I bin it. <coughs> So we are good. So I'll put my headset on and I'll turn my noise cancelling on. So later on, we're gonna do a comparison between our two types of headset, because we currently run Bose A20s and these David Clarks. We're going to see which one is the preferred for us. Okay, so start with, just check my, my controls out. These are all digital, so we won't get onto that until we're started up. So you start from the top, and one of the things I've checked is my fuel. Now, we're in the middle of the plane. Check our compass, make sure that we're facing in the right direction. We run across the top, no lights on. Then we run across the bottom, and we just make sure that none of our panels have tripped, and then make sure that all of our switches are off. So, we are good. Which means I will start my EFIS, which is my Garmin G3X Touch. And we let that boot up. Now, in some ways, the process, you could shortcut it and you turn your EFIS on before you do the rest of the check. But I like to make sure that everything else is under control before I start the boot sequence. So we're there, all our databases are up and online. Our artificial horizon is aligning. We're okay. Continue. So once we get booted up, we will correct our altitudes and then we'll be okay because our barrow pressure is slightly offset. I got my toes on the brakes. Both lanes on. Key on. Throttle out and then in a smidge. These are all booted. I've got to drop my altitude. And what are we at? 1026. So just jump in here. 1026. Confirm. And now we're at our altitude. Right, so, clear prop. During this process, I'll be pressing the start power on and the start button until we're running. You'll hear it arc up. Okay, avionics on and you've got intercom, so you should be able to hear me now. So, We've got our rev set to our 2700, which is what we need to take out the chatter in the gearbox. And I put my park brakes on while I was adjusting the stuff up there. So we're just waiting for our temperatures to come up to acceptable. We've got 84 litres on the digital, which is uh, about four hours of flight time. And we're just looking at our temperatures and our voltages coming up. Now our alternator won't click in until we're over 2700 revs which we are so now we're putting power on I'm just gonna close my vents up a little bit all right lane bay's got an issue so we're 
we're just going to go for a shutdown and then reboot. Now we're okay. Now I've got my volume set to 54%. Let's just wait for our oil temp to come up. So we're at our manoeuvre speed, so we're just going to make our way down to the strip. Pipe breaks off. I've got my autopilot turned off, but what I want to do when I get down to the main strip is just um, ensure that I've got my bug, so my little blue dial, set to my airstrip direction, which should just about be 1.8. Lane Bay's done its thing again, let's just push our revs up. Just while we're cruising along, let's kill B. Two, three, four, five. Errors, errors. Back on. We're just waiting for our oil temps to come back up. Into our grain, we're a bit lower at the moment. So I'm just going to uh, go along with the taxiway here and uh, dodge any little sticks and shrubs just to keep our prop clear. And as I'm going along, I'm just checking for any any birds, any kangaroos, any cows. Alright, so I'm at my run-up strip, and we're still not quite at temperature. So we'll just let it get warmer. We're okay. Feel? Alright, trim is neutral. Trim is neutral, mixture is fixed. We're in electronic fuel injection here. Primer is fixed. Flaps, flaps are clean at the moment. Instruments are true and correct. Security, hatches and harnesses. And we are good to go. Alright, so. Traffic, print you downs. This is Ventura X-Ray Zulu 8. Entering and rolling 1-8. For departure to the north at 2500. X-Ray Zulu 8. And I'm just going to take off to the south because it is a little bit nicer to not be going straight into the sun. So while I'm here, I'm just going to click the bug. And we're at 178, 179, so that's really good. Yeah, in case I get up and accidentally hit my autopilot, but she's off. And uh, we can cycle our... Um, now that we've got our temperatures and our oil temperatures up, we'll just bring ourselves up to 4,000 revs and then cycle. Okay, and she's returning, so let's roll. up straight away. Get some wicked altitude. Now I've got to bring my litres per minute back to 20 because it's running nicer at that. And let's pull our revs back down to 5,000 while we still climb. Just going to screw my fuel in. Yep. Wind that back a bit. And bring us back to 5,000. Wind our fuel back a bit more. Okay. We are up and we are flying. Our flaps are clean. Puff. Pick. Undercarriage is up. It's fixed. And fuel. So here we are. Now we can just uh, change over to my map.
and wheel around for our circuit. And, uh, yeah, I'm just going to probably bring us up to, uh, bring us up to 1,000 AGL and leave my circuit area. Now I flick my autopilot master on. I could fly up to uh, Bloodwood, which is up the top end of the station, and see what sort of um, water we have laying about. I can still see a lot of water around the lake. It's kind of like a Sunday drive, really. Uh, you, you're going nowhere with real any real intention. I can see twin swamps over at Winditta's, still got plenty of water. And I've got heaps of water in the creek. So there we are, red a thousand, so let's bring up our autopilot. And I'm just going to do altitude. And I'm just going to do uh, my heading hold. And let's just see how we go. Change my autopilot altitude to uh, 2500, that would be better. Let's watch her pull herself back up. And she's working on her trim. So I'm just going to work on my um, my balance. Make sure that my ball's in, in position. And yeah, just cruise. Um, it's one of those things I've got to start practicing a lot more with my autopilot. Now, I wonder if it's a setting, but what it is, is this headset and I'm doing my check, sorry, check my fuel, my pressure, my temperature and my coolant temperature. She's at the high end, she's at 108. Exhaust gas is uh, 843, which is okay, uh, fuel pressure is good. Continue and check my other steam gauges just for habit and have a look in my tanks. The killer in uh, this this headset that I'm using is whenever I talk in the intercom, it does auto mix. So I don't know if there's any settings here. So it means that as I'm talking, it just cuts out the background audio. Um, yeah, which is interesting. The Bose headset doesn't do that. It's actually an option, which is really good for solo flying. So that's pretty much, um, yeah, that's us. Like the flying is flying once you're you're into it, and using autopilot, yeah, you know, effectively that's just cheating. Uh, it's it's too easy. Uh, so I can uh, change my altitude, you know, target to 2600, 2500. I'm sitting at a thousand, um, which is you know plenty of height for around here. As I go along, I'm just checking for anywhere if I needed to where I could land. And I've got near wind, so I can land into any direction. So find a track, find a lake, something that I um, have a clear enough area that the plane will be recoverable, and more importantly, I will be. Right, so I've got to uh, Mount Courtney and I'm just going to um, beam Mount Courtney so I can see it here on my map. There's Mount Courtney, there's Homestead and down here is my secondary emergency airstrip. So what I'm going to do is just target Courtney, fly over one of my towers uh, and then I will uh, go do a missed approach or a uh, go round on my, um, my emergency strip. What I've got is indicating here on my um, on my GPS screen my wind. So I've got seven knots on uh, coming in from the heading 100. So just out on my nose now. So it means for my 
emergency strip, which is an east-wester. I will be coming in from the west, so I'll uh, be able to do a nice big circuit on that. She's a good skills strip, you know, there's plenty of length, plenty of space, and you've got to do a bit of a steep approach coming from the western side because of the gum trees and the creek. And yeah, I'll just set her up for a missed approach and that's just to keep my eye in, um, different strips, practice my, um, my skills and uh, make sure that I'm checking my procedures off on a different airstrip. Because if you're operating under the same airstrip too much, you'll just sort of, um, you can start uh, developing bad habits or shortcuts and everything and you're not so much flying the numbers, you're flying the landscape, which is a lot of our low level work is landscape flying, um, you know, using the steam gauges. For me, it's taking a bit of time to get used to a glass and a um, AH, but it's quite you know, nice. It's just one of those, keep, keep doing more and more of it and you can, um, you get comfortable with it, so then you're confident with it. So I'm not going to be using this aircraft low level, um, or you know what I consider low level, uh, until I've got a few more hours up my sleeve on it and my familiarisation effectively is complete. And before I do that, I'll um, do some low level on type with Dad. And now I'm just going to start with the aileron and finish with the runner, which will pull us around nice. Now we don't need to be pulling around on the limit, but she's um, a very forgiving aircraft in terms of um, like it's it's turns. Like I'm not I'm not getting any buffeting. I'm, I'm just uh, it's very smooth. It's a heavy aircraft. She's a bit wider and that just takes a lot of the roughness out of it compared to the little um, little canary. So as I've said, I can't really do much like outside shots or anything, but what I can try is I will just pop us out. All right, so I've just pulled the camera out so we can have a look at the, our glass and just kick my ball across a little bit. It gives me my, my map here. You can pinch and zoom, which is really nice, which is just familiarisation like an iPad. And we do our go through our checks. And we can just have a quick look outside while we're going along. It's really nice with the, um, the autopilot. It, it gives you a little bit more time to do everything. And the big trick is to make sure that we're not getting complacent and make sure we keep checking everything that we normally would check. Got a nice bit of water down there. That's the swimming pool. Now, what I've been doing is actually focusing on flying, so I'm not looking for any camels. But they're not the target today. Alright, let's get you back up in there. Alright, you're up there, you're having a good over the shoulder view. So if I'm going to be approaching from my, um, from the west, I'm going to cancel my autopilot, I'm going to turn autopilot all the way off, and I'm going to bring myself around to uh, join downwind for my runway. Funny, when I've um, got the autopilot on, I'm looking a lot more at uh, my instruments than when I'm uh, on the stick. You know, when I'm on the stick, I'm looking around outside. It's uh, just a bit of a strange phenomenon. Like I'm still going through all of my checks, making sure that I'm okay and that we are good, but 
the bit that's um, yeah, strange for me is that I feel a bit more comfortable at this stage um, with my hand on the stick and looking around outside, which shouldn't make sense because the autopilot will hold the heading and everything quite nicely. I'm downwind for my emergency airstrip. I say emergency, it's a, a you know a secondary airstrip. If there's something wrong with the other strip, you can use this one. Alright, she's she is just about gonna be a um 180, so I'm just going to uh, dial my AP, even though she's off, for 90, 090. And we've only got a thousand feet to drop, so let's start looking at pulling our fuel off a bit. Check our airspeed. Alright. Brakes. Brakes are clean. Check that they actually still have pressure. Undercarriage are fixed. Mixture fixed. Primer fixed. Security fixed. Alright, so as we turn around onto our base. We're going to start getting set up for our, um, bringing our speed right back. So we've got eight knots on the tail. Uh, she's bumping around a little bit down here. We were looking at a TAS. We're inside the white zone, so we can actually uh, start thinking about our our flaps. So we're on final now. Puff, pitch, in. Out of carriage. Fuel and flaps. We're looking at bringing our speed right down and we can bring us down to one stage of flaps. Now, what the intention today is a go around. So, just going to get in on my center line. And pull my fuel off a bit more. A little bit quick, but I am just doing one of my getting used to being low. And yeah, we could we could easily land that. But happy with um, this manoeuvrability down here. All right, now um, let's stroke out. Now we can uh, go to full noise. We've got two two knots of wind at six, so we've got a wind change in our altitude. So we are pulling up. Let's uh, clean up our flaps. Flaps up. And let's uh, get our revs right. Bring that back down to 5,000. And let's keep climbing. and we'll wind our fuel down. 
Uh, but I wanted to keep practicing all the way along. I um, made the driveway here nice and wide so that we had um, emergency strips everywhere we wanted. Which gives you a lot of time to practice this sort of work. Alright, so I'm just going to bring our fuel down a bit. Our flaps are clean. Yeah, and we're at our 5,000 revs. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. That's that's not too bad. Yeah, this is a Sunday fly with Jack. I'll just pull her up. Got plenty of speed under us, so I'm just going to um, get out of that terrain warning height, which is frustrating me a little bit. And this little line here, the blue one, is uh, giving me the terrain warning as well. <sighs> Time to wheel it back around. Enjoy those bumps. I actually wanted to become a helicopter pilot. A lot of people um, ask on the channel, you know, why a fixed wing over a helicopter or why not a helicopter. Um, no, I originally wanted to fly helicopters and uh, I wanted to fly helicopters uh, in the military. I wanted to be uh, in army aviation as a pilot. Unfortunately, my... Um, my, my physics skills weren't quite up there. Uh, I didn't do very well in the in the classroom. I studied physics, but I um, I, I think I only got over fifty percent, just over fifty percent, at the end of um, TE. Yeah, there's a number of reasons why that's the case, but uh, one one of those being some. Uh, Let's call them educational difficulties. Okay. AP's on. Activate it. Let's um, cruise along at that. Yeah, so I wanted to do aviation. And then um, I went off in uh, around 2012-2013. I went up to Geraldton and learned how to fly there. And I sort of stopped for a couple of years. And then uh, when I came back to the station, I started flying again and went and had to do a uh, you know, bit of remedial training because uh, there's no substitute for recency. You, know, you want to make sure that you're getting those hours on type and getting them regularly because that'll make you a, a better pilot. It's like any other skill, you know, even shooting. So um, the other plane, the Canary, is my brother Tom's, or originally was my brother Tom's because I crashed the other plane, which was Dagani. And Dagani was a, again, a Savannah, an ICP Savannah, but it was one of the earlier models. So she was a 912 Rotax, and uh, it had a shorter cabin than the S that we have. And yeah, I crashed it pretty badly. Um, we ended up, the plane was a write-off, so, and I spent a couple of days in hospital. We are a little unsure about showing the video of that. It does exist. I'm trying to work out how to grab the high resolution photo of it because that was back in 2020. And, um, yeah, that that sort of thing happens you you do you do stuff it up at times and uh, so because my brother wasn't he wasn't flying as much as he wanted and so we sort of traded it'll be good to um, have a fly with Tom again it's been a while so I'm going to um, come in on the big strip here and I'm just going to do a couple of, uh, well I've got crosswind up here, uh, it should just about be slightly off the nose. Do 
do a couple of um, practices. Probably do um, one missed approach circuit or bad weather circuit and then uh, do a full stop. Pranty Downs, Ventura, X-Ray, Zulu 8, joining downwind for runway 0, zero. touch and go, X-Ray, Zulu 8. Alright, so, my brakes, park brake is off, still have brake pressure. Undercarriage is there, I can see it, it's down. Next just fixed, prime is fixed. And security is all good. I haven't taken my seat belt off and the cabin crew have secured the doors for landing. Alright, I'm just gonna start descending onto base. A little bit more ball. Bring my uh, leaders down to about seven for this manoeuvre. There we are at six. Bring it back in. A little bit more power, a bit more pressure. Okay. Now we're getting those terrain warnings, which is lovely. I've got 600 feet to drop, which is fine. I'm just about perfect. 200 feet to drop before turning on to final. And as I go into final, I'm going to do puff, and my trim is good, so let's bring this around. Oh, I overshot the strip a little bit, that's fine. Alright, fuel off, let's get some speed down. Puff. Pitch, undercarriage, flaps and fuel, so I've got to shave off a bit more speed, so I'm just going to side slip it which helps me lose a bit of altitude whilst not stalling. Alright, we're in the white zone, so let's whack on a stage of flaps and bring it around. And I've just got my nose at the end of the strip. Doing a lot on the stick, which Dad will growl at me about. Should be doing more with my feet. Set the bug. And here we are, so we're just off the ground, I'm just going to start putting a bit more fuel into it. Uh, we're sitting at about <laughs> three feet off the ground, so a metre for everyone else. And uh, let's rip her up. Flaps clean. There's one of those difficult things to practice is those non-ideal situations and um, pushing yourself into that just to, you know, upskill so that when something bad does happen. Um, you can handle it and you don't stress or panic. It's one of those things um, I've learned potentially the hard way. Alright, we've got plenty of room. We're at below circuit height, so we're just going to wheel ourselves around and we'll do a nice gentle descent because we can. A bit more ball. And start bringing our fuel back. One of those things, um, when you've been doing a lot of altitude work, everything happens faster when you get to the ground. Bring fuel back. Pitch in. And there's our little bit of our crosswind. We've got six walks 
Uh, six knots from zero eight zero. Get my ball level. I'm pretty much at this, but it's just a very cruisy approach. Um, that trim's okay. I'm not fighting it. I'm just bringing ourselves down at 70. We're at 80 knots now. We need to pull some speed off. So we're just going to fly all the way down to the strip and pull the fuel back. Alright, time to put it down. Uh, it was a little bit hard on the nose there for my liking, but she is heavier, so I could have put a trickle more power onto it. And we don't want to drop below 27 again because of our chatter in our gearbox. And I could just pop my door open for more air, but I'm just going to do it on the little window vent. And that's us. Autopilot's off. Good. And yeah, let's taxi back. Let's get in home. Now, I need to dial this around to my engine page and check my temperatures because we're turbocharged. We need to make sure that we idle down. And we need to get our temperatures down. So check our um, exhaust gas temperature, EGT, and I like to uh, wait until we're down at an uh, average of 680 or below 680. Now we hadn't been giving her a hard time so we're at 680 now. Every time I put a little bit more fuel in she starts warming up again so we want to make sure that our coolant temp doesn't go up either and we're just going to avoid some bumps as we go along here. I want to keep some speed without having to put more fuel in. Now just bringing our speeds down. And I'm just going to stay just outside of the shed. I can pull her in the rest of the way. And I'm just going to wait till we get down to 684 on my exhaust gas temp. We're at 686, 687. Okay, so she's just started climbing. 684. Alright, good, good, good. We're dropping all across the board and uh, before our water temp gets up. Right. And we do the clean up. So we're going to put you back up there. Now the clean up, we'll just go across the top here. First thing I'll be turning off is my comps. Do him manually. And then we would go through and we get down to making sure our flaps are clean and our trim is clean. So, you're going to lose audio here. And now I go across to my EFIS and I turn them both off and engine off. And then I fill out my logbook. I flick the EFIS back on for my hours on that. And yeah, I'll just pull her away and we're good. So, next thing to do is before I get out of the cab is clean up my Bluetooth. Turn off my headset. And I like to do my seatbelt back up when I get out. Door and my pillow cover. So, thank you very much for joining me on that flight today. I hope you've enjoyed it. It's an introduction to the new aircraft we have and we're going to be featuring them a fair bit more. Flying is just a part of operations out here. So, thanks very much and hope to see you next time. Cheers everyone.